Chinese leader Xi Jinping is in Africa this week, where China has invested billions of dollars in infrastructure. Instead of giving Western-style loans with strings attached, like reforms to human rights, China offers an alternative, a buildup of Africa's infrastructure in exchange for raw materials. While many Africans see this as a boon to the economy, it has taken a toll on Africa's natural resources. China has a very great role to do in Africa in development. That is appreciated. But uh, we would like respect for those resources for which Africa is endowed, including rhinos and, uh, and elephants. Due to demand in Asia, two of Africa's most iconic species are being heavily poached and China is largely to blame. The consuming is doing a lot of damage. Some African elephant species have declined by 60 percent in just the last decade. Rhinos have gone extinct in some African countries and more are being poached every year. Both rhino horn and elephant tusks are forbidden from being sold to China under international agreements. But a combination of African poaching rings and Chinese demand has created a thriving underground trade. Elephant tusks are prized in Asia as a medium for religious carvings and trinkets. Rhino horn is toted as a cure for cancer and other maladies in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, rhino horn is keratin, which is like my hair or your hair. So it makes no sense to consume it. But those who are making money out of it, you will be surprised. They are coming up with so much uh, propaganda, unfounded information, that they market as if it is scientific truth. Organized crime rings have moved into the poaching trade, combining modern technology with a vast underground network of criminals and traders. Corruption in Africa and China has made their impact even more devastating. Rangers meant to protect the animals and Chinese officials regulating the trade have both been sucked in. The poaching is being done by organized criminals. And it's uh, become an international thing now because a lot of this uh, money is laundered into terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda and so on. Ironically enough, the infrastructure that Chinese construction workers are building is also helping the poaching trade. Areas that used to be all but inaccessible by vehicles now have vast highways that give easy access to poachers. My house is next to a highway now that has just been completed by the Chinese. I like the highway. Ten lanes. I have never seen such a highway in Kenya. So good thing to happen. But these are people who have a tradition of consuming wildlife. And it is not just the animals that are suffering. If the killing continues like this, it will affect Africa's economy as well. And elephants are, are an iconic species here. Um, the tourist industry is the biggest revenue earner that the country has. And without elephants, they get to lose a lot of other species as well. Human casualties have also become an issue as the fight to preserve Africa's endangered species intensifies. But there may be light at the end of the tunnel. At a CITES conference earlier this month on international wildlife trade, the issue of China's demand was addressed. Um, the government is very aware that they have a problem. They have recently started a system where working with different tour groups and stuff so that when Chinese visitors hit the African continent, they immediately get an SMS text message saying, you know, enjoy your stay in Africa, but whatever you do, don't buy ivory. One advocacy group called Wild Aid has started an awareness program with well-known celebrities. Their tagline is, When the buying stops, killing can too. Holly Kellum, NTD News.